three more stops. Two more stops. One more stop. George, Jeff, I am. This is such a thrill to meet you. I've been a lifelong fan, man. I'm so excited. Uh, I'm sorry uh, to hear that, buddy. <laughs> well, I got to lie to you the first time I meet you, you know. Oh, great. <laughs> well, thanks for talking to me about your new film, Vanquish. I just Thank finished you. it. Uh, very exciting. Thank you so um, much. Very stylish. You know, that's, you know, you really, I was expecting some sort of action film, but I wasn't expecting the lighting and you just really went kind of artsy on a lot yeah. of scenes here. Well, we did, you know, yeah, we, uh, hold on. I'm going to put a piece of gum in my mouth. If sure, that's okay. go ahead. Um, yeah, you know, with these movies, these movies have been kind of done to death, you know? So, I mean, the, the, the mom with the daughter getting kidnapped and she has one night to straighten out these things. So I, I, I said to everybody, I said, look, if we're going to do this, let's figure out a way to make it look different, feel different. Let's not, you, you know, let's, let's go really crazy with the look, the color palette. Let's really try to make this thing different, you know? And, and, and you know, I was looking at a lot of Korean gangster movies, which I, I just love those movies and they really push it. So I kept thinking, well, let's push it too. Why not? I mean, you know, who's going to stop it? So let's just- right. Yeah, every, Morgan, every crazy idea we've ever had, let's try it, you know? Yeah, because Morgan Freeman scenes were all blues. You yes. Know? And then every time you showed the cops, it was like a green night vision. Yes, to it. Yeah. yes. that's exactly right. You know, we, we try to find a different color palette for each place. So like you said, Morgan's all blues, uh, some purples, and, you know, he was an isolated figure living by the ocean. So we, I tell you, uh, uh, Jeff, what we did there is we shot all of his scenes in 8K you know, and then everything else we shot in, in 4K. So like his world is very crystal clear and you'll notice the other stuff was a little more mushy. You know, it was all done on purpose. Right. Uh, like you're, that's hundred percent right. The cops world was all a green night vision look. And then and Ruby Rose had the white jacket the entire film, which was yes. a, a neutral, you know, like a no color. Yes, exactly yeah. right. Yeah, wow, very, thank you. Thanks for noticing. Thank you very much. And, and then Ruby, thank you, Jeff. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, all those years are film school. Go, you know. Right. <laughs> I hear you. You look for those kind of things, you know. Oh, great, thanks. Uh, thank you for because it's much more than just dialogue. It's, it's aesthetics and, you know, it's, 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 you're trying to tell a complete story with so many different things. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks for noticing, man. And, uh, you know, Ruby Rose, she almost looks like she's from the future in this movie, including her motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I love the George Lucas movie, THX 1138, you know, so we, I definitely was thinking of her, you know, uh, that, that a bit there. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's, you know, it's, it's a wild mix because there's a lot of foreigners in the movie and there's some stuff that's subtitled and, you know, there's a lot of, you know, like uh, the one bad guys from France and, you know, it all kind of, I wanted to give it this sort of like, what city am I in? What is this place? You know, I was asking myself through the whole movie. I thought, what you kept showing the skyline, but at the end, I noticed he was on some waterfront. So I kept thinking maybe Miami or we never said where yeah. we were, and uh, we actually shot it in, in on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi, and uh, but then we we got pickup shots in other cities, and then uh, we we got a couple of Getty images. Yeah, I was trying to look at a license plate or something. I mean, you kept that's it another a, thing. I, I couldn't took all figure the license, it out. I took all the license plates off the cars. I didn't want anybody to know ever where they were. Well, it didn't feel like L.A. I'll tell you that. Or, no. You know, so I was just like, yeah, you kept me guessing through the whole movie. Where are we? <laughs> well, great, good. I'm very yeah, because I wanted. And then the other thing was no extras. There were never any extras in the streets. Everything was always very empty. So I kind of, it was almost like a western in that way to me. It was like uh, just like high noon. It's like everyone's gone. It's just the characters, you know. So, uh, which the producer loved because they didn't have to pay for extras. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, <laughs> I guess the budget went to Morgan Freeman, and he's in a wheelchair. He gave yeah. a super criminal vibe, even though he was a cop, a retired cop. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Mor yeah, Morgan's great. This is my third movie with Morgan. He, he literally has become one of my best buddies. And so like working with him is just like, uh, it's just a dream. He, uh, he's Morgan Freeman, man. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, you know, and uh, the first a, time, well, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, there was a voyeuristic kind of vibe to this because, you know, she's wearing cameras, he's watching everything she's doing. So it just came, it, that also gave a creepy vibe to it too. Great, thank you. Yeah, you know, I, I again, 
you know, a lot of this stuff, again, you know, I, I would love to tell you that like, oh, we, we thought this out for months, you know, but a lot of it, we just was instinctual. And a lot of it, we were just trying stuff. And uh, um, you were like, oh, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's try this. You know, like, you know, you, hell with the script. Let's try this, you know, and because I'm a writer, I've, I have a sense of structure. So if I make a change, I know how it's going to affect other scenes. So, uh, but yeah, it, it was a little bit fly by the seat of our pants. I mean, you can't tell by looking at the movie, but so much of it was just like the day before we would just totally change a set the way it looked like uh, um, the cinematographer, uh, uh, Toss, uh, his son's African-American. And, and uh, he, uh, when we were doing the scene with the three black guys and she goes into that den with the, with the three uh, the tough guys. And uh, we were like, Mr. Smalls. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Smalls, yes. And we were like, oh God, I've seen this scene a million times. It's like, what can we do to make it different? And Akeen, the, 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 uh, the camera operator said, I said to him, I said, what is the last thing these three guys would be looking at? And he said, I curling. Know. Curling, yes, yes, I yes. noticed that. And we went, curling, <laughs> that's it. So then we got all these curling videos and they're running in the back. I'm like, what? I go, am I imagining that? These guys are watching curling with yeah, rooms? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was, it's a lot of choices like that we kept making, you know, because we figured, Keep the movie fun. Just make it different. And, and, I, and I'll tell you, one of my, my favorite interviews I did in the last few years was with Nick uh, Vellalonga. And there he is, you know, in your movie, you know, from Green Book. And there yes. he is playing, you know, a detective. So I gave you that Italian flair. I love it. There you go. Yes, an Italian flair. And his partner is from clearly from the South. I mean, so right. again, it's that where am I kind of vibe, you know? Uh, yeah, Nick's one of my dearest friends. So. Well, you know, I'm a Las Vegas native and I have to ask you about Midnight Run, which I think is one of the best movies to represent Las Vegas. Every time I go to McCarran Airport, just got back from uh, uh, Salt Lake City last night, who you're going to be talking to my best friend in a few minutes here after me uh, and Tony Toscano. Uh, and just Midnight Run is just one of my favorite films. I was wondering if you have like a favorite memory of that film or. Uh, of Midnight Run? Yeah, I, I can tell, I mean, it, it's not actually, my dad was still alive when we made Midnight Run and my father showed up in McCarran Airport, which he flew in. Cause my father, yeah, we didn't come from a, a show business background. You know, we came from very working class roots. So my father couldn't believe that any of this stuff happened. So I introduced my father to Robert De Niro and Robert De Niro took my dad out for a night on the town, which I, I know added years to my father's life, you know? So I remember like I, I went to bed and the next morning I saw my dad coming down the hall. He was still wearing the same clothes that he was wearing the night before. I go, dad, did you ever go to bed? He was, no, I was out with Bobby all night. You know, he went to this place, he went to that place. <laughs> Bobby. Bobby, yeah, they were yeah. best friends. Yeah, so that's probably my best memory of me. Right, and we just lost uh, Yefet Koto last week. I know, you know, I know, another wonderful guy. That's the wonderful guy. I can tell you another midnight one, sir, about Yafet Kauda. You know, all those steaks he was eating in the scene, he goes, is this gonna, you know, when he's sitting in the coffee shop? Oh yeah, of course, and yeah. They, and they, well, we, they shot eight takes of that. And in the opening shot, he's cutting into a steak, if you'll remember. Right. I ate like three of those steaks because he would cut it, take a bite. Then they would take the plate and put a new one in. And I said, who's eating these steaks? You know, so I ate like three of them. So that's, uh, that's another midnight one story. Well, George, congratulations on Vanquish, uh, and I uh, wish you all the best of luck with it, and uh, come visit us in Las Vegas. We'd love to have you. I would love it, Jeff. Thank you very, very much.